Hello, today we have a perch, a type of fish. Uh, we're going to go through our perch dissection. Uh, we're going to start with some external features and then after we finish those up, we'll start looking inside, cut out one of the sides so we can look inside. Uh, so first we're going to measure how long he is. It looks to be about 15.8 centimeters long. Uh, then we'll look at the caudal fin, this tail fin, and we'll see how deeply it forks in. So if we lay it out, I'm going to go inside that fork with the zero point, and we can see it goes about 1.1 centimeter on that fork. So 15.8 centimeters long, 1.1 centimeters on the fork, and then we'll measure how fat or how girthy he is. So looking at the girth, uh, we're looking at about 3.6 centimeters. So 3.6 centimeters on the girth there. Uh, so 5.8 centimeters long, 1.1 centimeters on the fork, and then the girth, how thick he is, is going to be 3.6 centimeters. Uh, next, we're going to look at his mouth. So if we come and look at his mouth, uh, you can see it's located on the bottom of his uh, head, way down on the bottom in the mouth, it almost opens up straight to the bottom. Uh, this is very typical of what you would find on a bottom feeder. Since it's on the bottom, it makes it easier to scoop things from the bottom of wherever he's living at. So typically you'd expect something with a mouth like this to be a bottom feeder. Uh, next we want to look inside his mouth. It's going to be a little tough for you to see on this video, uh, but if we look inside his mouth, you can see he's got some teeth in there. Hopefully I can open his mouth without putting my hand in your way. Uh, but if we open it closely, you can see he's got some teeth in there. Uh, those teeth point back into the mouth and that's to help capture the food and draw it into his mouth. So keeping things from uh, leaving his mouth when it comes in. So he's got these teeth pointed backwards uh, as they come in. So that helps to keep food and draw food into the mouth and keep it from swimming out since it's in the water all the time. Uh, next we're looking at the eyes. Uh, when you look at the eye, it's got no eyelids uh, on it. It's always in water. The purpose of your eyelids is to keep your eyes moist. Uh, so since they're always in the water, they don't need eyelids. Uh, so eyelids is not something you're going to see on most fish. Uh, then on the front we have this covering protecting the gills. It's called an apiculum. Uh, it can be a little uh, sharp if you're not careful with it, uh, but it's got this bony covering called an apiculum. Uh, if we can lift it up and we can raise it and you can kind of see inside. It's kind of hard to see right now. Uh, but you can kind of see into the gills. Uh, so in the next step, I'm just going to pause the video and cut that apiculum off so we can kind of see those gills a little bit better. Uh, so we'll catch you once we got that apiculum off. Uh, so we've gotten that apiculum cut off. You can see that right there. Uh, and we can see the gills. Uh, the gills are located right here where the apiculum was removed from. Uh, so we can see those. Uh, first, it wants us to count how many layers we got. So we got one, two, three and four layers of gills. So we got four different layers there with our gills. Uh, and hopefully you know by now gills are used for the gas exchange uh, for the uh, fish to take oxygen from the water. Uh, so we'll, next if we remove these gills uh, then we'll be able to look at some of the components of it. So I'm going to take them out here in a second and we'll catch you on the flip side. So now we're going to look a little more closely at the gill. Uh, we've got a layer cut off. Uh, in the front here you can see what's called the gill regus. Uh, they kind of like tooth-like projections that stick out the front there. Uh, in the middle, that kind of thickened piece you see right there, that's the gill arch. Uh, it's used for uh, support and structure. And then in the back we have all the filaments. So those are called gill filaments. Uh, the regulars are used to, for protection to keep things like debris when the uh, fish eats from getting into the gills. Uh, the arch provides support for the gill and the filaments. And then the filament is the place of our gas exchange. So the gas exchange actually takes place in those gill filaments. Uh, so that's your component for your gill. Uh, next we'll move on and look at some of the fins. So we'll catch you then on, back on the main box. So next we're going to look at the anterior dorsal fin, which is this top fin, anterior means in the front, so this dorsal is on the top and then the anterior is the front one, and first we can see it's got these spines, 
Uh, if I come from the front, the spines really don't affect me. But if I try to run my finger from the back, you're going to get stabbed by those spines. So I'm a little careful with it. Uh, but they stab you if you come from the back. And what's that truly really useful is if you're trying to eat the fish. If something's in front of it, it can see it coming and it can try to avoid it. If something's coming from the back to eat it, those spines are not going to feel good in the mouth while I was trying to eat it. Uh, next, we want to see how many spines there are. So if we spread them out, you can kind of count them out. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight on the anterior dorsal fin. Uh, then it also wants to know on the anal fin. Uh, the anal fin, if you don't remember, is on the back, on the on the bottom, in the back. So we have one in the front, that's our pelvic fin, and then on the back is the anal fin. And we can come back there, and we can also try to count those. So if we look at those, if we start counting from the front, the one my finger is on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we got 10 on the anal fin. So 8 on the anterior dorsal and 10 on the anal fin so that's how many spines we're looking at on those uh, again both of, the, of them are very useful in protection they both face that same direction so they're useful for protection against predators trying to eat it uh, next it wants us to find the la lateral line and if you can see that it's a very pronounced line running the length of the body on your fist uh, very pronounced you should be able to see it in this video uh, pretty easily so that lateral line is used as a sensory organ. It can sense the flow of currents around it. Uh, if you have a bunch of fish swimming together, it senses and feels those other fish swimming side by side. Uh, so that's your lateral line. Uh, next, it wants us to look at the sex of our uh, fish here. It's going to be a little tough to see on this one, uh, but we're looking to see how many, essentially how many holes it's got here on the bottom. Uh, so we're looking to see for an anus and a urogenital pore, and if it's a female, it's also going to have a genital pore. Uh, in this case, it looks like we just have two openings, an anus and a urogenital pore, so that would indicate a male. So that's what we're looking at on this uh, male perch in this case. Uh, so uh, next, we're looking at the scales. The scales uh, have a very smooth feel if we come from the front. So if I rub my fingers from the front, it's very smooth. If I come from the back, it's much, much rougher. It's more like sandpaper if we come from the back. So smooth from the front, rough from the back. Again, that kind of fits in with that protection aspect we looked at earlier. Uh, if we look at them under a magnifying glass, you would kind of see like a circular uh, rectangle with uh, rounded off corners if we look through a magnifying glass at it. Uh, so that's a little bit on your scares. Uh, next, the, we've already talked about how the fins can be used as a defense mechanism. Uh, finally, let's locate our fins before we start cutting this guy open. Uh, so we had anterior dorsal fin we already looked at. There's a second dorsal fin behind it that's softer, doesn't have the thick spines like we saw in the front. In the back, we have the caudal fin. Uh, we saw it was forked earlier on the first step. Uh, it's kind of been shriveled up in the since it was preserved, but we have that back there. In the middle, we have this uh, pectoral fin, a uh, very thin, raspy kind of looking fin. Uh, then on the bottom, we have the pelvic fin. Uh, you got one on each side. Uh, it kind of sticks out, kind of like a rough goatee almost on this fish, uh, is what that kind of appears like. It's not spiny. Again, it's going to be a soft ray. And then we already looked at the anal fin, which is very uh, spiny, again used for protection back there. So we got that anal fin back there. Uh, so that's your primary uh, fins found on a fish, especially on this perch. Uh, next, we'll take a break and cut them open so you can uh, look at some of the internal uh, fish. fish. Okay, so now we got him cut open. Uh, you can kind of see some of his interior organs and what it looks more specifically. Uh, on the back here, you can see a lot of the muscles. Uh, it's kind of like when you fillet a fish, if you've been fishing, you can kind of see uh, that muscle is on the back there. Uh, but we're going to be looking specifically at these organs up here more towards the front. Uh, so we're going to start by finding the hut. Uh, the hut's going to be located in the lower segment, uh, kind of towards the front. And it's got two uh, segments to it. It's got the atrium and ventricle. So you can kind of see the heart here uh, sticking down. And we got an atrium and ventricle. So there's one and then there's two. So you can see that two-chambered heart. Uh, remember, uh, 
your fists only have a two chamber heart with the gills and that connects from the heart blood goes to the gills and then it gets circulated through the body until it comes back into the heart with the atrium and ventricle. Atrium is the top, ventricle is the bottom. Uh, so once used to, when it comes back, the blood's stored and then it gets pumped out to the gills. So that's our heart. Uh, next, uh, it's not going to be really easy to see just because of the wood we got him cut open at. It's going to be our esophagus, pharynx area. So the in a fist, the esophagus leads to the stomach. Uh, pharynx in the esophagus leads down into the stomach. So if we look at this guy, uh, we got a swim bladder back here. Uh, but we're looking at the way the food comes in. So it comes in and goes down into our intestine. So I'm going to pop this muscle out of our way so we can see a little bit better into that elementary canal. Uh, I'm going to move a little more muscle out of our way. And you can see swim bladder in the stomach. And here's our stomach right there sticking up. And the esophagus leads directly from the mouth straight into the stomach. There's no curving. Uh, there's no turning as it tries to reach it. It goes directly into that stomach. Uh, that allows for food to quickly enter the mouth and go straight into that stomach. Uh, if we can move that muscle out of the way, it'd be a little bit easier to see. Uh, but it comes straight into that stomach. Uh, so that's kind of advantageous, keeping it all in line. Uh, they're very flexible as well. Like if you can poke it and prod at it, and it's not going to break very easily. Uh, and it has to because of the way it takes in solid food. Typically, it doesn't munch and chew on its food, so it's got to be able to expand for the food that's coming in. Uh, so that's looking in the esophagus leads to the stomach, and then the stomach's going to lead back to our intestines. Uh, so after we leave the stomach. We're going to move into the intestines. Uh, we're going to cut and see. It doesn't look like there's any, anything inside the stomach, but we're going to cut in just to double check. So, look at this. so we just got the stomach open, and next we're going to see if we can't see what's inside. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything inside, uh, but I'm going to put it in and find out. And it looks like we're empty inside the stomach. Uh, so no real food uh, eaten right before it died. Uh, Maybe a few fish food crumblies, but not much in the way of uh, solid substance to identify. So that's what's inside the stomach on this fish. Uh, next, we're going to look inside and we're going to see the swim bladder. Uh, swim bladder is very elastic -y. Uh, It allows the fish to move up and down in the water column. Above it, you can see a very well-developed kidney. Uh, that kidney's got lots of branches, lots of tubing, and it's very long. It proceeds almost the length of this fish's body. Uh, that makes sense in a freshwater fish. Uh, it's got, it produces a lot of waste, so you expect it to have a very well-developed uh, kidney there. So remember, kidneys used to process and develop the waste. Uh, next, we want to look at sex organs, so if we can't move uh, swim bladder out of the way, we've already cut the intestines out. Uh, as we looked at the stomach. Uh, so we've got those out of the way and you can kind of see back here you can see it's got uh, gonads uh, so it's got the testes or the gonads as you would expect in a mare so our early identification was correct in identifying it as a mare so this is a mare for us. Uh, just locating some of our major organs we've already looked at the heart earlier uh, we got the stomach cut open, we got the swim bladder up here, the kidney above that. Uh, the liver is going to be down here as well. Uh, if I can move these out of the way. Uh, the liver is going to be up here underneath. Uh, other than that, we looked at the esophagus going, leading into the stomach. Uh, so up ahead we had the esophagus leading into that stomach. We've already cleared our intestines out. I think that's most of the major organs we're looking for. Uh, we could go through and find the spleen or the gallbladder, uh, but we have the majority of the major ones we're looking for there. Uh, so hopefully this helps you in identifying some fish parts, looking at your fish, and knowing some information about the fish. Uh, thank you and have a great day.